first part of our tic-tac-toe tutorial, we created a single button called the Yes button, but when we ran the program, nothing happened when we pressed the button. What we want to do now is we want to modify the code by adding a procedure that is triggered every time the button is pressed. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to implement an interface in this class called Event Handler. And once we uh, implement this interface, immediately Eclipse starts complaining that we have not created the necessary methods, and we also need to do an import. So let's import the event handler from the Java FX library. And once we do that, we see there's still another error. And now we need to import action event as well. And once we take care of that error, we need to implement all the unimplemented methods. In this case, it turns out to be a single method called handle. And this is the method that's going to be triggered each time a button is pressed. One other piece of overhead we need to take care of is that we need to tell the class that when this yes button is pressed that it's going to be the current object that's going to handle the event. So we need to tie this button to this event handler. To do that we simply go where the button is defined and we're going to say yes button set on action this. By putting this line of code here, we're basically attaching the button's event handler to the current object. And in here, we can take whatever action we want when the button is pressed. For our simple problem, I'm just going to print a message to the console saying that the button was pressed. Let's run this application now and see if we can detect when the button gets pressed. You can see that each time I press the button now, a message is sent to the console. What we've just demonstrated is the traditional way that events have been handled for buttons. However, with the beginning of Java 8, there is now an alternate mechanism for handling button presses and we're going to demonstrate that now. It's a somewhat easier method than we've just demonstrated. I'm going to go back now and undo a few things that I did in the earlier implementation. First, I'm going to delete this interface. Second, we're no longer going to need this event handler. And lastly, we're going to get rid of this line of code that attached the button to the event handler. We're going to replace that line now with this single block. And so what we're doing here is a little bit complicated, so let's go through it. Previously, I had done a yes button set on action this, and then attached the uh, handle method, which is now completely gone. Instead, what I've done is I've created this Java Lambda expression, which is a new to Java version 8. And what you can think of it as is essentially an anonymous method that gets attached to this event handler for this button. The syntax for this is a little tricky. You can see here that I've got an event, uh, which is a parameter that is being uh, passed when this uh, method is triggered. And this opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket define an anonymous method that contains the block of code that's going to execute when this yes button is pressed. Let's run this and see if it works. And once again, you can see that the behavior is identical to the previous method of handling the button. However, you can see that the code has been greatly shortened. So what's a better way? Should we always handle the button presses like this using a lambda expression? Or there are some cases where it would be better to use the traditional method with the external uh, handler or handle method? Well, that depends. If you have many different buttons in your application, all of which have very similar behavior,
it's going to be better to handle the button presses using the traditional method with a named handle procedure. However, if you have a button that has unique behavior, uh, you might want to use this much shorter lambda expression instead. In our tic-tac-toe game, we're going to have nine buttons with extremely similar behavior, so it's going to be better for us to use the traditional event handling method that we showed earlier. However, at the beginning of the game, when you ask the user whether they want to go first or not, this lambda expression might be a better technique to use to gather up their answer. In the next part of this tutorial, we're going to show you how to determine inside the event handler which of several buttons was pressed. For example, consider this case where we have two buttons, a yes button and a no button. We would like, once we're inside the event handler, to be able to tell which of those buttons triggered the event that caused us to be here. We can do that simply by taking the action event that's passed in this method and comparing it to a particular node that we have. For example, here, we're taking the event parameter and doing a get source on it, which gets the address of the entity that triggered this event. In this case, we happen to know it's either the yes button or the no button. By comparing the address to our yes button, we can tell if the yes button was indeed the button that caused this action to be triggered. Otherwise, since we only have two buttons in our application, we know it must have been the no button. If we have many, many buttons here, we can cycle through them and compare the addresses until we come across a match, and then we'll know that that was the node that triggered the event. Let's try this now and see how this works. You can see I've got my grid here with two buttons, and if I press the yes button, the word yes shows up. Likewise, if I press the word no, the word no shows up. In this, the final portion of the event handler tutorial for buttons, let's see how this would work in a grid of nine buttons. Recall that our nine buttons are arranged in a one-dimensional array. And when we enter the event handler for the buttons, what we can do simply is use a for loop to cycle through the buttons to look for an address match. Once we get the address match, we'll know by the value of i which button it was that triggered the event. Let's run this now. Here is our nine button grid. For example, if I hit button four, you can see that I can tell inside the event handler that it was button four that got triggered. One other trick we want to show you, which is currently commented out, is that there's another way to figure out by looking at the label of the button that was triggered and using that to take some sort of action. Here, for example, I can uh, turn off the for loop altogether And by using this single line of code, I can take the source that triggered the event and cast it to a button, since I know that the buttons are the only things that are triggering this handle procedure call. And then I can do a get text on it to retrieve the text from the button and print it to the console. Let's try this alternate method here. If I hit button 9, you can see that I can, by retrieving the number 9 from the text of the label of the button, I can print it that way as well. So this should give you some flexibility as to what to do inside the event handler to handle the various buttons for your tic-tac-toe game.